Hi, I'm Mike Bellevue, and I'm back here in the shop. And today I'm going to be working on coning the muzzle of this beautiful early Bucks County rifle that Dave Crispin made for me. So you guys have seen this rifle in several videos before, and it's uh, it's a great shooter. But there's a reason why we cone muzzles, and I used to do it on my rifles before have not done it for a while so now none of my rifles have cone muzzles and uh, as a result I have to use a short starter all the time to get the ball going and you've seen me do that in videos you, know, you put the ball down and you whack it with a short starter to get started cut the patch off and then whack it again to, to start it so you can actually run it down with a ramrod well when you cone the muzzle you don't need to use a short starter you just push the ball and patch in with your thumb and run it down with a ramrod and all set. So it saves you from having to carry a short starter and it saves you the steps of using one and it makes it a lot easier to use a loading block out in the field. So this is one of my hunting rifles and I'd like it to be easy to load. Also for primitive shoots like a woods walk or any timed events uh, having a cone muzzle is a big help. And I'm going to show you how we do it, and it does not affect the accuracy at all uh, if you do it right, and it's almost impossible to mess it up. I, I want to say almost, because if you try hard enough, nothing's really impossible. But let's take a look at the tools that you use to do the coning. You don't really need much to cone a barrel, and to put a long cone in, I'm going to be using this Joe Woods coning tool. And this is pretty cool. Uh, comes from Joe Wood's fire fire lock shop. And I'll give you the the whole the whole thing right there. These are the instructions that come with it. I've had this tool for God going on 20 years, I guess. But they're still in business. They're still making them. And uh, the only real downside with it is you need one for each caliber because this end here that looks like a cleaning jag. That's the guide, and it's caliber specific. So this is a 50 caliber one. I don't know if you can see that. It says 50 on there. And this fits in the bore and keeps everything centered. And then this is tapered, right? So uh, that's what actually puts the cone onto, onto the inside of your muzzle. And let me show you everything you need. These are the instructions, and they're pretty handy to have. I lost mine, and luckily a friend of mine uh, sent me a copy of them. But what you need to do this is pretty simple. You need some double-sided carpet tape, and you want to use the light-duty stuff. Uh, so you want to use the thin stuff. You don't want to use the heavy contractor tape. You need three grits of wet and dry sandpaper. All right, so three grits of this stuff. The first one you're going to use is 220 grit. And one sheet of each one is plenty, uh, more than you need to do a barrel. And you'll see that as we go along. Then we're going to move to the 320 grit. And we're going to finish up with a 400 grit, which is really going to polish the inside of the barrel and will probably make the cone uh, better finished than the whole rest of your barrel is, even. And the way this works is pretty simple. We're going to stick that sandpaper to this tool using a double-sided tape. So in order to do that, you've got to make a template for the size that the sandpaper has got to be. And the way you do that is really taking a piece of paper and just with some trial and error, uh, making a template that wraps around it so it, it wraps around it without overlapping. And then once I do that, then I take some uh, folder, uh, folder paper, almost like a cardboard, and make a template out of that so that I can uh, I can cut out the pieces of sandpaper that I need and and tape them on to to the mandrel. And then the only other thing you need is a large tap wrench, 
because this is how we're going to turn that tool in the barrel to cut the cut the cone. All right, so let's show you how it's done. So the actual operation is pretty simple. You have to remove the barrel from the gun. And the reason for that is because if you don't, you can end up drifting off center. If you just try to, say, chuck this in a vise or, or run this in a drill. Now, I'm going to tell you, I know people who have done that successfully, but I prefer to follow, uh, follow the directions that uh, Joe Wood gives, which is to insert this into the bore. And this is a 220 grit and to turn the barrel at the same time as you turn your tap wrench here okay so you turn the barrel counterclockwise and you turn the tap wrench clockwise or vice versa I guess either one works anyway this is this is how we're gonna cut it we're gonna cut it by turning both of them now I put the barrel resting on a cardboard box so that it spins without damage in the tang okay but basically we're cutting that cone in there and I don't know if you can see it but we're starting to cut it now and you can see the effect on the paper so we're going to be wearing the paper fairly fast this this paper is pretty close to being done right now and just periodically I'm going to clean out the bore and um, and I'm going to put a fresh sheet of paper on and I'm just going to keep this process going. So we're just going to work it until it's about ready to go. Alright, so this piece of paper is worn out. I can feel the grits missing right here with the barrels rubbing compared to all the grit I've got right here. So. Well, it's time to change, pretty simple. You should be able to just peel this off. If you can't, uh, you might have to use some acetone or alcohol or something like that, but usually they'll peel right off. Then before I put another piece on, I'm gonna take an alcohol rub, just this alcohol swab. And I'm going to clean the bore with it. So, pop that on here. Got a cleaning jag, and I'm just going to send that down. I get all the cuttings cleaned off. You can see we got definitely got some schmutz there. And I'll take a a dry cloth patch. I'll send that down. Okay. Now I'm going to put a new piece of sandpaper on the mandrel and I'm going to go back to cutting. Okay, I'm going to test it for fit now. And the way we do that is I'm going to take a dry unlubricated patch and I'm going to put it over the bore. I'm taking a 490 lead ball, putting it in and let's see if I can seat that ball halfway with my thumb pressure, which I can. And that's about what we're looking for. So, just as a final check, I've got some tallow here. I'm going to lube up a patch. I'm going to put that over. And I'm going to see if I can just push this ball right in. I should be able to. And... Yeah, there we go. No problem. I can push it in pretty much over the entire ball. So that is as far as I'm going to go with the 220. Pull that out. Okay. And I'll let you take a look at this. I don't know how well you'll be able to see in here, but 
if you can see right over here, the grooves have not been completely polished out, right? So the uh, the patched ball is still going to be riding in those grooves coming out. It's just relieved. Now, some people go until you can't see the grooves at the top anymore. And that doesn't really hurt anything if you do that, but, but you don't need to do it. So, this is what I've got left of the 220 grit sandpaper. So, I would say I used about half the sheet to get that far. And now we're going to move to the 320 grit paper and do it all again. And at this point, I'm not really changing the dimensions, not, not appreciably. Uh, what I'm going to be doing is polishing out the lines left by the 220 grit sandpaper. So we'll polish it with 320, and we'll polish it with 400, and we'll have a mirror bright bore, and we'll be ready to go. So let me get on that. Now right, we're just going to do the same thing with the 320 grit paper as we did with the 220. And uh, because the 320 is a little bit thinner, it's going to go a little bit deeper into the bore. And it'll be the same thing when we get to the 400. That'll go a little bit deeper in. And all we're doing, like I said, is polishing off now the lines left by the coarser paper. Okay, rifles back together. And I can... I'm going to start a ball, which is exactly what you want. And it holds tight enough that I can still cut patches at the muzzle. And try to give you a little look inside. Drop a bore light down here. All right, and let's see. So if we can show you that. You can see it pretty much looks the same all the way up. You can still see rifling all the way to the muzzle. So, we are good to go. All we need to do now is take it out to the range and show you what it'll do. And that'll be another video.